morning we will be going over our homework nine. So the first part we are um, looking at adding our functions. And so on here, f plus g, so we are going to go through and add those functions. So function f is x squared plus 2x, and I'm going to add to that 5 minus x. And so putting all of this together, it looks like we're going to have x squared plus x plus 5. And that is going to give us um, our answer in the domain here. This is a polynomial, so it will be all real numbers. For part B, we are subtracting the two functions, and we have to be careful on that one. g of x was 5 minus x. And then we're going to subtract function f, and I need to put every part of function f inside parentheses so that I make sure I have the correct signs. So we have 5 minus x minus x squared and then minus 2x. Now combining all of this, we have negative x squared, negative 3x, and plus 5. And again, the domain here would be all real numbers. Part C, we are multiplying our functions. And so we would multiply x squared plus 2x. And we're going to multiply that to 5 minus x. And this is where we're going to need to do our FOIL. So we're going to have 5x squared minus x cubed. And then on the inside, plus 10x and then minus 2x squared. And we can combine our like terms. We will have negative x cubed, positive 3x squared, and then positive 10x. And again, this is a polynomial, so the domain is all real numbers. On the part D, we have division, and we do have to be careful with the order. We're going to have function g of x as the numerator, so that's going to be 5 minus x. And then f is going to be the denominator, and that's x squared plus 2x. And now we don't have a polynomial, so we do need to check our domain. So I'm going to come over to the side and set that denominator equal to 0. It looks like we have a GCF of x, so I'm going to factor that out. And now I can just set both parts equal to 0. And notice that x equals 0, that is one part of our exclusion. And then the other would be negative 2. So our domain here is going to be all real numbers except, and then we need to exclude 0 and negative 2. Okay, for question 2, um, we are adding first part. So g of x is going to be 4x cubed over 5, and I need to add to that negative 2 over x. And again, we'll use our shortcut here. Do multiply the denominators, and then cross multiply for the numerators. So that's going to be 4x to the fourth, and then minus 10. And again, to check your domain, because you do have a rational, and it looks like, again, we'll have all real numbers except x can't be equal to 0. Okay, for part B, we're subtracting, and it's going to be your function g of x. So we have 4x cubed over 5 minus, and then we have a negative 2 over x. And again, same way, we're going to multiply those denominators. And then here we're going to multiply, and that's going to give us 4x cubed to the fourth. And then here when we multiply, we get negative 10, but then we had that minus there. So that's going to be positive 10. And notice you have the same denominator, so the domain will be all real numbers except x can't be 0. Okay, part C, you're multiplying these, so we're going to have negative 2 over x times 4x cubed over 5. And this time, notice if we multiply across top and bottom, we have negative 8x cubed 
over 5x, and now we should be able to cancel these x's here and here because you are multiplying. And so when you reduce that down, it looks like you're going to have negative 8x squared, and that's going to be over 5. Now, checking our denominator, there's no way to change that 5 to a 0, so this domain will be all real numbers. Part D, we're dividing functions, so we have function f, and that's going to be divided by function g. And so we do need to multiply by the reciprocal, and when we flip that over, then we can multiply across the top and then across the bottom. And it does look like we can reduce. We can divide out a 2 out of the top and bottom. So it looks like we're going to have negative 5 over 2x to the fourth. And this time when we check our domain, we have all real numbers except x cannot be equal to 0. Question 3. We have f plus g, so we have the square root of x minus 7 plus the square root of 2x. And those aren't like terms, so that's as far as you can take that addition. Now you do need to look at your domain, and this time you are going to pick on the smaller amount. So we've got 2x, and then we have here x minus 7, so x minus 7 is definitely smaller. So we're going to have x minus 7 has to stay greater than or equal to 0. So that tells me that the domain x has to be greater than or equal to 7. Now g of x minus f of x, we're going to have the square root of 2x minus the square root of x minus 7. And again, those, you cannot reduce them down anymore. And looking at the domain, you have the exact same radical. So it's going to have the same exact domain. X has to stay greater than or equal to 7. Now multiplying is going to change this. G of x, square root of 2x, times the square root of x minus 7. These you can multiply under the radical. So you're going to have 2x times x minus 7. And then you can multiply that out to be 2x squared minus 14x. But again, looking at the domain here, notice that the smaller amount was still that x minus 7. And so when we're looking at that domain, you have still x has to be greater than or equal to 7. And then part D, you have function g of x, which is the square root of 2x, over function f, which is the square root of x minus 7. We do need to rationalize. And notice in the numerator we have the square root of 2x times x minus 7. And then in the denominator we have just x minus 7. So that tells me that my domain here, now just like previous, we had x is greater than or equal to 7. This time x is just going to have to be greater than 7 because if we let x be 7, we would have a 0 in the denominator. Okay, question 4, we are looking at composite functions. And notice for part A, they have us to find g of f of x. So I'm going to take function f and substitute that in function g. So that's going to look like here function g, 3x plus 1, so 3 times. But instead of x, I need to use the function f. And then we have our plus 1 still. And with our distributive property, we have 3x squared minus 15x plus 1. And the domain here, we have a polynomial, so it is all real numbers. Part B, we need to find h of g of x. Okay, so now again, here's function h, and here's function g. So that's going to look like here x minus 1, but I'm going to sub in 3x plus 1. 
and then minus 1 over 3x plus 1. And so in the numerator, we have 3x. In the denominator, 3x plus 1. And that's all you can do with those. Please don't try to cancel the 3x's. And for our domain, since we have a rational function, we're going to have to set that denominator equal to 0 and solve. And so here we have a domain of all reals, except x cannot be negative 1 third. And part C, that notation again means f of g of x. So again, I'm plugging g of x into f of x, and that's going to give us 3x plus 1, all squared, minus 5 times 3x plus 1. And so when we full out that numerator, or the first term here, that's going to give us 9x squared plus 6x plus 1, and then we have minus 15x minus 5. Combining your like terms, you have 9x squared, 6x, and negative 15x is going to be negative 9x, positive 1 and negative 5, negative 4. And this is a polynomial, so your domain here would be all real numbers. All right, with number 5, here we are finding h of f of x. So again, we're plugging in function f into function h. So we're going to have 2 times x cubed plus 6 and then minus 5. And so we have 2x cubed plus 12 minus 5. And so that's going to give us 2x cubed plus 7. And the domain here will be all real numbers. Now for the next one, we have h of g at x. And again, we're I'm going to substitute in function g into h. So h is going to be 2x, but again, instead of x, I'm going to put function g. And then we have minus 5. And this is about as far as we can go with it. There's no like terms or anything there. And that is an odd root. It's a cube root. So our domain will be all real numbers. And finally, for C, that is g of f of x. So I'm substituting function f into g. g is the cube root of 4x. So that's going to be the cube root of 4 times x cubed plus 6. And so that's going to be the cube root of 4x cubed plus 24. And again, since that is an odd root, your domain will be all real numbers. Okay, now evaluating these functions, f, f minus g at negative 5 is going to imply that we need f at negative 5 minus g at negative 5. So f at negative 5, that's going to be 25 minus 4 times negative 5. So that looks like that's going to generate 45. And then g at negative 5, that's going to be 2 minus 5. Uh, let's see, negative 5 times negative 3, so positive 15. So that's going to give us 17. And now we need f at negative 5 minus g at negative 5. So we need 45 minus 17, and that's going to give us 28. Okay, now for part B, this means that we're going to need g at 3 times f at 3. So g at 3, that's going to be 2 minus 9, so negative 7. And then f at 3, that's going to be 9 minus 12, so that's going to give us negative 3. And so now we need the product of those, so negative 7 times negative 3 is going to give us positive 21. Part C, now this, notice it's a composite function, so that changes the notation a little bit. That's g of h of negative 6. So the first thing, again, we need to find h at negative 6. 
So that's going to be 3 over negative 6, which is negative 1 half. And that's what we're going to replace that value with. So now I need g at negative 1 half. And g at negative 1 half is going to be 2 minus 3 times negative 1 half. So that's going to be 2 plus 3 over 2. And so here, putting that together, a couple ways you can think of it, that 2 is really 4 over 2 if you get a common denominator. And so all of that's going to give me uh, 7 over 2. And then part D, you have H of F at 2. So again, first thing, you need to find F at 2. And if we do that, then that's going to be 4 minus 8. And that's going to give us 4. Or negative 4, sorry. And then we're going to go back and we need h at negative 4. So then that's going to be 3 over negative 4 or negative 3 fourths. Okay, number 7. This is where we um, needed to decompose the function. And noticing the pattern here, h of x is the same thing as f of g of x. And so g of x is going to go with the inside part. So g of x is 3x minus 1. And so then f of x is the outer part. So that's going to be 2x cubed. Okay, and by the same idea over here on number 8, this inside portion right here, that is going to be your g of x. Be x plus 5. And then your h at x, oh, no, f at x, the outer part, that's going to be negative 3 over x, and then plus 7.